the time is here. An opportunity that we probably won't get again for a long time. The sun is gone and the clouds are out, and as the wind blows, we're bringing out those extra sweaters, cuddling next to our friends under the umbrellas. So although we may be getting colder, we can't forget rain means a fresh start. Welcome to a fresh show, Show 26. Why is it so cold outside? It's only 62 degrees Fahrenheit. What are you, some weather app? QTLA wishes they had me. Calm down, sophomore. Well, I'm Victoria. And I'm Evelyn. And, and welcome, welcome to, to Show 26. 26. Do you want to feel all warm and toasty on the inside? Help out other students to become a peer tutor. Applications are open until the 19th. I don't know about you, but staying in a warm place or receiving volunteering hours sounds pretty good to me. Holding umbrellas in one hand and signs in the other, teachers are going on strike in LA, causing many schools to become deserted. Michael is here to shed some light on this rainy situation. On Monday, over 30,000 teachers went on strike. At first glance, it might seem like it was for a pay raise, but there are more problems than what meets the eye. On January 11th, the LAUSD offered the Union of Teachers a proposal with a 6% salary increase, decreased class size, and increased number of nurses and librarians. However, the union believed that that was not enough. Many believe it is shameful that while we are considered as the richest state in our country, we rank only 43 out of 50 for per pupil spending. Like, one of them told me that, like, this LAUSD has, like, $2 billion left in savings. And all we really did was, like, absolutely, like, nothing. They give us, like, paperwork to do, but it's not really academic work. It's more like a reflection sheet. Serving over 600,000 students, the Los Angeles School District is currently the second biggest school district in the country. Let's hope the strike and the weather take a turn for the better. This has been Michael. Back to you guys in the studio. Seniors, reps from PCC will be in the Career Center on Wednesday, January 24th, during fourth period and lunch. This is only for those who have not applied yet. Make sure to bring a pen or a pencil and your social security number. Hey V, are you going to the winter formal? No, I don't have a date. Then I got something to get you noticed. I don't think so. Sp but speaking of getting noticed, I heard the French protesters have been wearing yellow vests. I don't know about that one, but I baguette Jesse does. Since mid-November of 2018, members of the Yellow Vest movement have been in protest. Due to the tax increase on fuel and carbon, participants of this movement aim to convince the government to lower these taxes. Already, the French had been paying more than $6 for one gallon of gas, but the price increase was originally initiated by President Macron as a step towards environmental change. The most recent was Samedi dernier. In Lyon, there were three manifestations, three rassemblements de gilets jaunes. One at 10h du matin, au Breton. Un deuxième à 2h l'après-midi à la place Bellecour et un à 17h devant le quartier Saint-Jean. Donc samedi dernier, il y a eu trois rassemblements gilets jaunes à différents endroits de la ville, il y a différents horaires. Je suis en désaccord avec la violence euh, qu'il y a pu avoir. Elle est minoritaire, est pas, la plupart des gilets jaunes ne sont pas violents. Les policiers français euh, qui ont aussi été très violents euh, lors des manifestations. Besides hoping to lower taxes, protesters demand to raise minimum wage. Other countries have hopped on this movement as well, and it has expanded to three Europe countries and even Taiwan. Only time can tell whether the Yellow Vest efforts will prove their worth in the end. But until then, this has been Jesse saying au revoir. Do you want to build a snowman? First of all, it's raining. Second, that movie was six years ago. Pretty please? Can we? Please, please, please? Oh, uh, I think I'm getting a headache. Oh no. Well, I think we need a break. Oh hey Apaches, I'm here to talk about how easy it is to not be a jerk. It's a new semester, and it may be confusing for some people, but parking permits from last semester are expired, and you no longer have your old parking spot. So it is important that you look at your new red second semester parking permit and read the friggin' number. There are a lot of parking spots in the student parking lot, but only one of them is yours, and your parking spot is precious. But there comes a time where you need to stop. Stop parking in other people's parking spots, and don't be a jerk. Just thinking about AP tests gives me the chills. AP packets are now available on the ASV website and sales will begin on January 28th. Each test will cost $110. Yikes. Make sure to sign up before the prices go up. Hey, is your government working? 
No? Have you tried turning it off and on? Yes, and it still doesn't work. Maybe Brandon can tell us what the problem is. At 25 days and still ongoing, this holds a national record as the longest government shutdown in American history. But progress is being made to end it. With over 800,000 workers affected by the shutdown, concerns are rising about how many of the workers will be paid. Many unions for federal workers are suing and fighting for workers to be paid or to refuse work. The FDA and CDC haven't been able to practice routine regulations and monitor industries, also raising concern about public safety. With the government shutdown slowly showing its effects to the nation, many people throughout the country are hoping the shutdown will end. To end the government shutdown, there has to be some sort of compromise between President and Congress, whether it be giving the president funding for his border wall or if he chooses to lay off of that and take some sort of deal uh, with the, mainly with the Democrats in the House. The president did say, however, that uh, he is not willing to sign any legislation if there is no funding for his border wall. Constitutionally, Congress is the body that's in charge of making and passing the budget. They have control of the power of the purse. What we might see is a legislative end around where congressional Republicans start to feel pressure because of the unpopularity of the shutdown. It's already the longest one. So there might be pressure from their constituency to go ahead and to vote. There's already Republican senators who said they would uh, vote to end the shutdown. Hopefully Congress can come to an agreement soon and get the government running again. Back to Victoria and Evelyn in the studio. Puddles are becoming swimming pools with all this rain, so why not take the swim test? The next test date is Thursday, January 17th at 12 p.m. Make sure to bring your ID card and swimsuit. It's literally raining cats and dogs. No, it's raining balls on sports. You're sure right, guys. It was raining hard yesterday, but we're lucky the weather forecasted way more than just rain for our Apaches. See it all here on Apache Sports. It's raining, it's pouring, but boys soccer is still scoring? The Bulldogs were no match to the Apaches and their steadfast and stronger team. Though Burbank had close kicks to the goal, they couldn't manage to get the ball past number one, goalie Tyler Berger, creating a tense field. Within the second half of the game, our Apaches used their skilled footwork and fast plays to score two goals, in which Burbank just couldn't compete with, resulting in a win of two to zero. So to begin with, you know, we really uh, started off this game uh, really fast and intense. We got our passing, us down. I think the wind and rain really helped us out too. We really moved the ball a lot better. We put the ball in the back of the net and we uh, worked together as a unit. And uh, hopefully we'll keep on having results like this in the future. I think the second half of our season is, is looking good. So this was our first game of the second half. So we're gonna, we're gonna get that, we're gonna get that dub. Give up the good kicks, boys. No weather condition can stop you Apaches from succeeding. This has been Sabrina. Now back to Evelyn and Victoria. Today was a late start, but do you know what tomorrow is? Um, Thursday? No, it's a common core day. School will be out at 11.40, so make sure to stay cozy out there, Apaches. With the return of another Spider-Man movie, it also brings another movie review. Let's swing over to Jake for more. For the past few months, I've been the one and only Spider-Man reviewer. Not anymore. All right, folks, let's do this one last time. Peter B. Parker here to tell you more about this film. The animation is trippy, dog. as crazy as it is. Get back to class. Now, where were we? What's up, Apaches? Today, we have Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. This film follows Miles Morales, a teenager in Brooklyn, who got bit by a radioactive spider, turning him into the amazing Spider-Man. Miles soon runs into Kingpin, who attempts to open portals to other universes. From there, he encounters other Spider-Men from other dimensions that help guide him to become a better Spider-Man. My favorite thing about this movie is the unique comic book style animation, and is one of the best animated films I've seen so far. I couldn't help watch this movie three times and wouldn't mind going for a fourth. This movie won Best Motion Picture for Animation at the Golden Globes, Critics' Choice for Best Animated Feature, and New York Film Critics Circle Award for Best Animated Film. I encourage you to watch this movie before it leaves theaters, because I'm giving this film five name tags out of five. This has been Jake. And Freeze. Back, back to you guys, guys in the studio. studio. 
If you want to be featured in our next show, make sure to guess our outro song in the comments section down below. And don't forget to follow us on our social media platforms listed down below to stay updated with all of our upcoming shows, live streams, and more. This has been Victoria. This has been Evelyn over here. And, and stay, stay warm, Apaches! Apaches.